Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. I'm here today to talk about Black History Month. The month that is a celebration of my people. Because I am a black man and everything. And it's about all our accomplishments. Um, all the oppression that we have gone through over like centuries um, of living in like America and stuff like that. And even till this day, we are still being oppressed. And so I'm here today to talk to you about certain characters or TV shows or episodes that revolve around Black History Month that I personally enjoy. So I'm here today to talk to you about Lawman Bass Reeves. So this show was a mini series and it just finally aired its finale in December of 2023. All right, let me address this right here right now. I know it's not Black History Month, duh. You know, that's two months away, but I don't feel like waiting two months just to talk about this show because I feel like talking about it now. And also because, you know, the finale, like I said, just dropped in like December. Now, the show came out in November and you can watch it on Paramount Plus, but it is actually a MTV show so weird seeing how mtv is all about music and paramount plus is partnered with mtv but they're also partnered with bet and you would assume bet probably would have made this show but they didn't in fact this show has been eight years in the making the lead actor um who plays in this show whose name i can never ever ever pronounce <sighs> I'm gonna attempt one more time. David Oyelowo. That's all the best I can do. <laughs> British star who created this show. Well, co-created it in there, I should say. He's an executive producer. Um, it was actually Chad Feehan that actually created this show. And they've been trying for eight long years, but no network would ever pick it up. And finally, MTV did. This was a passion project of David, much like Selma and everything. And nobody wanted to make that movie and stuff. And the thing is, is like when it comes to Bass Reeves, nobody has never really heard of this man's name, but he is extremely famous. He was the first black U.S. marshal. And... Yeah, I never heard of this dude and when I was growing up in the Black History um, Month and stuff. He's been portrayed mostly in television, but like guest appearances here and there, popping in and out of stuff. He's been in a few literature books. He's been in a few like video games and comics. And he's appeared a few times in like movies, but yet nobody has never heard of this dude. I've even asked some of my older relatives, have they ever heard of him? And they said they've never been taught this dude in Black History Month. And gee, I want to know why. <laughs> because they don't want you to know about him and stuff. And that's a real crying shame. I mean, look at Billy the Kid. Everybody knows who Billy the Kid is. This dude has been in multiple television shows, movies, radio, comics, games, like you name it. And he's always getting solo movies and he finally just got his solo television show. And it's just like everybody knows who he is, but nobody really knows who Bass Reeves is. And it's a quiet crying shame. And his story is very remarkable and everything. And this show does a really good job of portraying him. Now, the show is not perfect, but it's extremely good. And, but the sad thing is, it's only a mini series and it's only eight episodes long. After this mini series, that's it. No more like series. Unless for whatever reason, the network decides to pick it up for a second season or do spinoffs. But that's just wishful thinking. So for the most part, it's just a one and done type thing. 
and like you know this show is a hit amongst people like there are people talking about it now now people know his name and of course there are those that want you to not know about this and that's like you know the little toxic people now i haven't seen uh you know no toxic youtube channels yet about this i haven't really done no soul searching for that but i was on twitter and ah, you have a couple of people who just want you to be pissed off about this because it's about a black cowboy. And, you know, I've seen comments like, you know, why do they try to make him so self-righteous and heroic and this and that? Well, gee, let's see. He's the main character of the show. Therefore, he is supposed to be the hero. He has flaws, but not many. But in solo shows like this, you don't really see too many flaws. And they don't really capture his entire lifespan, which would have been nice if this show would have had more than eight episodes and more seasons. But because it is a miniseries, they just wanted to focus on a certain part of his life and show him in the best light as possible. It makes total sense, but yet they don't complain when it's about other miniseries, about other characters and stuff. I mean, you know, if it was a show like Xena, yeah, you will see his flaws and stuff like that. But let's go back to Hercules, The Legendary Journeys, and there Hercules was perfect. He had no flaws until the fourth season, and then after the fourth season, he was back to being perfect, but yet you never hear nobody complain. Hmm, what is the difference between Hercules and Bass Reeves? It's on the top of their skin. Hmm. Anyways, then I saw a comment talking about one person, legit, I'm not even joking, they're legit just screaming online talking about, I'm tired of all this race swapping. And that's all they said. Now, I don't know the race of this person because they use a duck as like their thumbnail. But you can probably guess what race they are. And the fact that they're screaming this means they want to scream the word woke, but they don't scream the word woke because people now make fun of people who scream the word woke and talking about there's no di there shouldn't be no diversity, this and that. And here's the thing about this show. There is no race swapping, period. This is a show, a historical show, and a show based on like um, true events and everything. And the main character, Bass Reese, is a black man, well, was a black man in real life, and he's a black man on the show. And every other character on this show, um, half of them are based on real people, and the other half are made up for the show, but they're an amalgamation of real life people. So there is no race swap. And it's just another idiot wanting to scream just so people won't watch this show and be angry for the sake of being angry because it doesn't look like them because they would prefer this show to be about a white cowboy and a, and a lawman and a marshal and stuff like that. And I blame all those toxic YouTube channels. I've said this before and I'll say it a million times. They go online screaming their prejudice all because they don't want to see diversity because they just want to see themselves on screen. They have their minions and their, million, their minions take forth and like the comment sections and on Twitter and other social media doing their bidding and it spills over into politics and so forth and so forth. These people suck. They seriously just suck. However, when it does come to race, there's only one character who wasn't really cast um, correctly, and that is Ike Rogers. I'll get into Ike Rogers a little bit more in this video, but Ike Rogers, from what I've read and what I've seen, he is triracial. What is triracial? Well, he is mixed with black, white, and Native American, but on the show, they only cast him as a black man. Not sure why they did that. It would have been better that he would have been multiracial. And so, but he's barely in the show. He's only in there for a few minutes and then he's out. Which is quite a shame because he is also based on a real life person. And he was also a black, uh, well, a triracial, but black, white, and Native American, like, you know, U.S. Marshal, who was, you know, fighting, um... In the Civil War, later became a marshal and everything. And him and Bass Reeves actually went on many adventures together, but you never see that in this show. 
And so, like I said before, this show is not perfect. Eight episodes is just not enough. Especially when they start doing time jumps and you're just kind of like, well, what year are you in exactly? Because only in the first two episodes, which I reviewed, go watch that, they only state the year then, but then after that, they no longer do it. And it gets a bit confusing, especially when they jump ahead uh, for his daughter, like 15 years for his daughter to be like 15 and everything. Also, because this is a television show, it is loosely based on legend. There are some things they get right and there are some things they just get wrong and other things they just make up that I can't find no legitimacy to, um, to it and stuff. And, you know, while doing research on this show, there were some interesting things they took liberties with that they changed the source material up. Like why Bass got arrested and was put on trial. Yes, it does depict him shooting the cook and everything, just like in real life, but the reasons for that were changed. Also, I don't believe that the finale ended the way it did in real life because I just don't see it. But, you know, they're trying to make him look as historic as possible because this is his, like, show. You know what I'm saying? And so, besides that, there are just kind of other little things that they shove in this show that, that's just kind of like, it just took up a waste of time. But I get they wanted to have this one person to have character development, but it didn't make sense as to why this one character's personality completely changed after, like, 15 years. But people's personalities do change, but in the course of eight episodes, you don't think 15 like um years has passed from like the first episode all the way to like the others you know <clears throat> oh, my throat scratching is cold anyway but um yeah it is about a man named bass reeves and bass is when i say this man is a legend he is a legend which is why i'm so complex as to why they never taught him in school and not only did they never teach him in school they never taught him during Black History Month. Maybe they have now, I don't know, because I'm not in school no more, but back when I was growing up and my relatives were growing up, we've never heard of this man. And actually, it wasn't around until like the 2010s until he started appearing in TV and in movies and stuff. All before then, they never talked about this man. But yet again, everybody knows who Billy the Kid is and everything. And when it comes to this show with certain people, you know, they spell their names differently, like his wife and his daughter and stuff, and also Willie Leach. Why exactly they changed the names around, um, spelt them a different way, I have no idea. For whatever reason, they did. But back to, like, you know, Chad creating this show. So, like... This show was actually supposed to be renamed into 1883, um, the Bass Reeves stories. And it's supposed to take place within the Yellowstone universe. But then they later on they tried, um, decided to drop that. They probably did that thinking this show couldn't stand on its own legs. So they had to like, you know, be a part of another like franchise or whatever. But, you know, like I said, word of mouth, people are enjoying this show, so they didn't need the help of Yellowstone. So I am glad that they did drop that. But I will say again, eight episodes just isn't enough to tell this man's story. And this man has lived the life. And, you know... It wasn't a perfect life and it was a real cruel life, but you know, it was still like a life nevertheless that should be explored a whole lot more. So basically, Bass Reeves is, he was originally a slave and like he was so, like his, his owner sold him to his son and then so he was forced to fight in the Civil War, which was a travesty all on his own, forcing all these black people to fight in the war just so they can stay slaves. <sighs> I cannot begin to tell you how much that pisses me off. And how just disappointed it is that people would do something like that. And, you know, like, and they wonder why people are so upset and want their history told correctly. And why, like, you know, some people have guilt from their ancestors. It's like, this stuff was not cool, man. There was some strong hatred back then. And you know what? 
screw the father who played Jonathan Kent in Smallville, trying to make everybody believe that the Confederacy was the best place on earth for everybody to want to live in, especially black people. Screw that man, screw that man, screw that man. I don't know what happened to that Dukes of Hazard dude, but he is disgusting. He is nothing but scum. And so after they fought and, you know, of course, like, you know, I told you before, he went home with his owner and him and his owner played like a game of like poker, which Bass won, but the owner lied. And the owner said, look, man, if you win, I'll give you your freedom papers and stuff. Well, when he lied, Bass beat the crap out of him. Now, nobody knows that this is 100% true. See, this show is actually based on the Bass Reeves trilogy. And in the trilogy, it was written by Sidney Thompson. And so the books that it's based off, it's based off the first two of the trilogy. So it's like Follow the Angels, Follow the Doves, and, you know, Hell on the Border. And so there are some historians that say this is possibly true that they fought over a poker game for his freedom. And then there are some that say it wasn't. Nevertheless, he beat the snot out of that man and ran off and everything. And when he ran off, he went into Native, Amer uh, Native American territory where he lived for a good couple of years until, you know, the Civil War was like lost by the South. And then they freed every black person in America. Once there, he met a man named Pierce. And Pierce, who, um, I'm trying to think of this man's name, it's something Pepper, um, I'll get into him a little bit later, but anyway, Pierce is the man who he fought alongside in the Confederacy, now, when Bass was in the Confederacy, in the show, it depicts him, you know, shooting another black soldier who tried to run away and everything, the thing about Bass is that if he's ordered to do something, he don't care what race you are, he will go after you, and so, like, and this is also something very apparent when it comes to him being a U.S. Marshal, because in the show, they show him going after tons of black men who committed murder and stuff, and so, Pierce, he shot a young Native American boy that Bass pretty much looked at as his real son, and even though it wasn't. And so, you know, after that, he went home to find his wife, Jenny, who is no longer living in his um, slave owner's home. Now, in the show, he talks to Rachel Reeves, who is the slave owner's wife. And she said, you know, George went into politics, which he only served one year in, in Texas and you know Jenny's no longer there Jenny and her sister are no longer there now in the beginning the uh, Rachel is treated like as uh, treating Bass very nice very kind but then when she appears later on in the show she is just as nasty as her husband anyways he travels to like the Mississippi area where he finds his wife and she is pregnant and she tells him, you know, this is your child. That child is Shelly. I don't know if Chell not, not Shelly. <laughs> Shelly is the firstborn or not, but she's depicted that way in the show. And so then 15 years pass and he's living on a farm, but his farm is struggling. And then in comes that of, well, actually another man comes and shows up, but he has to talk to Judge Isaac Parker. And Judge Isaac Parker is real. He's known as the Hanging Judge. And basically with the world changing, you know, he needed a marshal who could speak Native American language. Uh, and since Bass lived among them and can speak their, um, their native tongue and everything, and since Bass is really good with like a gun because, you know, he is a marksman and everything and fought in the war, he thought Bass would be the perfect person to be like, you know, the first black U.S. Marshal. At first he hesitated, but then he decided to do it. And he spent 32 years working for um, Parker along the Mississippi area. 
And, you know, this is where the show, you know, um, takes foot, where we constantly see him out in the open, like looking for all these like um, outlaws and everything, some really bad, tough people. It has been said on record that when he retired, he captured 3000 like outlaws, both men and women. And so like they say he's been shot at multiple times, but he's never been hit other than his hat and his um, belt buckle. However, in the show, they changed this for some reason. In the show, he gets shot in the arm, but it only hits his jacket. And then they show him shooting his own hat. But then they show him getting shot near like the neck and shoulder area which i thought he never supposed to get wounded so i don't know if that's real legend or not but whatever and so like he's really good at doing what he does he's great at like detective skills and like he always gets his person most of the time and you know they show him partnering with other people because that's what he did in real life this is where the amalgamation stuff comes from and like you know one of the most interesting captures he did was when he pretended to be a drunk who knows about the bible now he was religious and he talked to this woman and her two sons came in when they all slept at night he captured the two men and arrested them because they were outlaws and stuff it's one of the most interesting episodes and I like it. He is a man of honor and he has a certain creed and, you know, he's only killed 14 outlaws in self-defense, but then he killed the man by mistake. I'll get into that man a little bit later. Now in the show, they show him partnering with a man named Shirley and a, uh, a man named Billy Crow. I'll get into them a little bit later. And so basically he's constantly away from home. And this does bring a strain on his family. He's never really there for them. Now the judge is played by Donald Sutherland. And in the show, they have a really good working relationship. And like I said, both in the show and in real life, he acquitted him and he worked for him for 32 years. He's never there to see his like kids ever grow up because he's constantly gone. And this does take a toll on them because, you know, in the show, Sally wanted to go to the carnival and he said he'll take her. But then, you know, he had another job to do and he kept promising that he'll take her twice next year and four times the next year after that. But, you know, she just wasn't having it. And it really pisses off his wife. Basically, he comes back, make love to her, put another baby in her and then leaves to go off to do another job. And it takes weeks for him to come back. And, you know, his wife is always afraid that he might end up dying. Now, in actuality, in real life, he wasn't even there to bury his wife, Jenny, because, you know, he was on another mission. And, you know, after, like, she died years later when he got older, he married this other lady. But that marriage didn't last long because later he died and stuff after he retired in 1907. And so Bass is a man that, you know, the man of the law and he wants to stop as much bad people as possible. But, you know, it pays extremely well. And with this money and being a black man and having a black family, he knows he's going to need a lot of money for them to survive on because of the way the country is and stuff. Like just because they're free don't mean they're going to stay free forever because they're still treated like crap. And we see in the show that, you know, he's respected amongst his peers and everything. Um, he's respected by like people who are white for the most part, but it's the black people who don't really respect him because in the show, he is constantly like apprehending tons of black outlaws and they see it messed up that he's turning on his own people. But for him, he doesn't see race. He just sees good versus evil and stuff. And there was a point in time when he came back home after he was going through some stuff because he has PTSD in the show because he's constantly seeing that Native American boy getting shot. And also because well, this is the part in the show where it gets kind of confusing. He's starting to see somebody else, but it's not the man he later killed by mistake. Well, at least in real life by mistake. In the show, it depicts him like killing somebody completely different. See. 
he has compassion for people and even when he does apprehend like you know um black prisoners and stuff he does feel sorry for them like you can see it like it takes a toll um out of um out of him because he's having to capture his own people and he knows that you know they're not going to get no fair trial because of the color of their skin and you know he does try to talk to like the judge here and there to like plead with them but it doesn't always work it did work with one man though and that man is like billy crow billy crow is a native american man and he is played by forrest good luck and so billy crow he used to work with these um bandits that will like you know he'll pretend like he's stranded and then they'll come out and then they will like rob people and stuff and so after bass captured him they did some talking here and then he's all like maybe i could be like you and out uh, uh, um a lawman and stuff like that well at some point in time bass did talk to the judge and that did happen and, um billy was pretty much under the um supervision of that of bass and they went on adventures together now billy is not a real person in real life he's an amalgamation of people and for the most part billy did redeem himself and everything seeing how bass um helped him along the way he ends up falling in love with some little girl that's like um she's not a burlesque or she's a prostitute i'm not sure which one um <clears throat> and so like i had to clear my throat and so like you know he helps bass out and he always has his back and even when bass shoots a man um out of pure rage and everything billy is the first to like reprimand him about that and everything and also was an eyewitness and the thing about billy other than redeeming himself there's not really much to him and stuff but he does get into a huge argument with shirley because shirley doesn't like native american people and so it's at the point where he literally wants to beat the snot out of like shirley and everything to bass breaks it up but when him and Shirley have to work for like Bass on a mission, like, you know, Shirley does get into a bear trap, like a literal bear trap. And he tries to help him out as best as he could, but couldn't. And it's only that in there, both men have a mutual respect for each other, which is kind of lame because they both hate each other. But, you know, it is like what it is and stuff. The Billy Crow character is quite fascinating because it does show that people can redeem themselves. But then it does suck that other people weren't given that same chance um, in the series and stuff. Now, one thing that does bother me about this series is that all the people he hunts and everything that he has to bring in, you know, they committed murders. It would have been nice to see them actually commit the murder before he goes after them because with all these like you know bad people and stuff we never really see what it is they do except for that one man who messed up that dude's face in the middle of the night but we never even got to see him mess up the dude's face so you know it would have been more compelling this you know to have some like you know more like details about like you know these bad people other than them just being bad and saying hey you have to go after this person because they murdered somebody now when it comes to that of willie leach this is the man that bass shot he was the cook the posse cook and everything now in real life his name was william leach but they spell it completely different and in this show his murder is completely different than what happened in real life in this show bass and billy have to capture a woman an old black woman who shot a man and um killed him with like you know a um a candlestick type thing you know the, the metal part that the candle the candle holder thing she beat the snot out of him with that and so like you know she says she's ready to do her time whatever she has to do you know what i'm saying so in the middle of the night she escaped how because willie the cook let her escape then in the morning bass is pissed off bass tells him like how can you do this and everything and he tells him how can you capture one of your own people and everything and like not only that but she's an elderly woman and you want her to spend the rest of her life in jail and you're going against your own people bass pulls a rifle on him and is just pissed off and shoots him point blank killing him in the show now in actuality there are two different occasions or two different stories as to what really happened 
one version is that they fought over a dog. <laughs> yes. Apparently in one historical story that um Willie's or William's dog like was eating the food that was meant for Bass and meant for the prisoners. And that pissed off Bass and Bass beat the snot out of the dog and William tried to stop him and then like you know Bass end up shooting him. That's one story. The other story is that it was a complete accident. Bass was cleaning his rifle and there was a bullet in the chamber and it dislodged and it shot William. And so like, yeah, I don't know which story is real, but a lot of historians keep saying that it was the accidental shooting. I hope it wasn't a dog that was suck. I don't know why they changed it for the show. Cause it does make Bass look like a terrible person for killing Willie in cold blood. And maybe they did this because they're like, okay, maybe he's too perfect and he needs some flaws, but why in the world would they do that? Having the accidental thing, like the thing about historical shows, I prefer if they stick to like history, but I do understand they change things here and there. Needless to say, what happened afterwards is a little bit like confusing when you watch the show. Because when you watch the show after he shot like Willie and everything, the next episode, we see Ike Rogers arrest um, Bass and put him on trial. And then Judge Parker acquitted that of like Bass. Now, in actuality, the shooting took place or the killing took place in uh, what year did it take place? I think it was 1838, I think it was. But he wasn't arrested until no 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 wait the shooting took place in 1884 but like he wasn't arrested until 1886 the reason why it took three years to arrest him is because of texas Ugh, it's always texas basically after like you know slaves were free and the south lost and everything texas was trying to make some laws in which like you know they can um make free slaves back into slaves and everything basically taking away their rights and everything like that yes they literally tried to pass that law and everything and so that what took a while because of the new laws that were getting passed and there was like a marshal that was part of the confederacy and stuff like that but bass did spend three months in prison but we do see him spend time in prison in the show but we don't know how much time has passed because it's only eight episodes they had to kind of wrap things up very quickly and so we don't know how much time passed but needless to say three years did not pass by and so like after that he literally told the judge and everybody you know like look man this was an accident and everything like i didn't mean to do it so he got acquitted but what happened in real life after that totally sucked he had to pay a lot of money um, in legal fees and he didn't have it. So he had to sell his farm and his family moved back to Texas. After moving to Texas sometime after that, his wife died of cancer and he retired in, like I said, in 1907. When he still worked in law enforcement and everything as a marshal and everything, but as soon as he took up the new job in Texas, he had to retire very quickly because he got old, sick, and then he died of bright, um, bright disease, which is kind of like where it kills your can um, liver and stuff. And it's really sad that that happened. He had to sell his farm and everything else. When it comes to him and Cheryl Lee, they don't get alone. He, Cheryl, Cheryl is played by Dennis Quaid, and he's also a U.S. Marshal, but he's more ruthless and he, unorthodox. And so, like, he will literally burn a person's home down just to, like, snuff them out and then, like, kill them or whatever. And he doesn't care if he brings them in dead or alive, especially if they're Native American. He hates Native Americans to death because he's just a racist and he's a hateful man and because they scalped him years ago. 
And so because of that, him and Billy Crow don't get along to the point where, like, originally he was introduced in the second episode. And so him and Bass went on a mission that went terribly wrong. When Cheryl shot and killed that man, you know, that really upset Bass and everything, and they no longer work together. After that, we no longer see him until, like, the final episodes, like, the, maybe the last two. And so, with the help of Bass, he got reinstated, but once again, went off the rails and stuff. And... It was even to the point where Bass like captured this one man to snuff out this other person and basically he told Cheryl just to leave him there and um or untie him and stuff like that but Cheryl decided to shoot him. It causes so much tension between him and that of like Bass. It's weird they're both law enforcement but they're like completely like different sides of a coin. And so basically when Bass is looking for Pierce and everything he him and jim crow and cheryl and all them they go and they go look for the dude and so like i said before it causes a rift between him and billy to where bass has to like stop it but when you know the climax started happening and the fighting started happening and everything um he is there for like his comrades and stuff but he ends up stepping in a bear trap and it's right then and there that him and Billy to have like a mutual respect for each other when Billy tries to help him. But Cheryl tells him, you know, you got to back up Bass and, you know, there's no hope for me. And he gives him his badge telling him one day he'll make a great U.S. Marshal. When Billy leaves, he puts the revolver in his mouth and pulls the trigger. And I'm just like, wow. It would have been more interesting to see him more in the show and all the conflict he could have brought because that would have been a whole lot more drama and something for people to like sink their teeth into, you know? Ike Rogers, also known as Isaac Rogers, he is an interesting character. Triracial, like I said before, black, white, and Native American. And he was also a U.S. Marshal and stuff. Him and Bass in real life rode together many times hunting down bad guys. In the show, you don't see that for some bizarre reason. You see these two talk for like a minute. I'm not really sure what they're talking about, but I think they have a disagreement about something. And for the most part, but when it comes to Isaac, in real life, he was actually murdered. And the thing is, I think he was murdered by ah uh, what's his name cherokee bill who was like a really notorious outlaw along with his lady bell star those two are really famous and in fact bell star she is a ruthless outlaw that bass reese in real life had to like take down and it's one of his more famous takedowns and stuff yet in the show none of these two even make it in this show and this is a quite like shame and everything because like i said before like you know eight episodes just isn't enough to tell this man's story and she's as famous as they say and there's been like movies and tv shows based on her and stuff she should have made an appearance shelly reeves is the older daughter of bass and she barely knows him because he's never really there and so like the show is pretty much split into two different stories. The stuff that's going on with Bass and then the stuff going on with his family. And the family stuff is made up of that of Jenny and that of Shelly. Shelly spends most of her time with that of her mother, Jenny, you know, helping her, um, her raise the kids. But then when she doesn't spend time with her, she's spending time with this guy that she likes. I think his name is Arthur. For the most part, she's very intelligent. She can read. She can write. Her mother can read and write, but her father, Bass, can't read. And we see this throughout the show that he can't read and it um, frustrates him and stuff. And even to the point where he'll make some stuff up. Like one time, like he had to capture this one outlaw, but then this outlaw, he had to end up, or one of somebody had to end up shooting and killing him. And when he went to the man's wife, the wife was blind. And she knows that her husband cheats around at brothels and this and that. And he left her like a letter. And she wanted Bass to read the letter because of course she's blind and she can't. Well, Bass can't read and he just made up like some story. But anyways, his daughter can read and write. Now at the very end, she wrote a poem 
that you know when the end credits start playing in the last episode is based off that poem now i don't know in real life if she wrote that or not because i can't find no um stuff on her but she does like that boy author but um she did marry somebody else i think his name is green sanders or sander green or something like that and she had one child that i know of in the show she's depicted as headstrong and defiant of her mother because her mother keeps telling her to stay away from that boy but she will not and keeps sneaking off to be with him when she goes to the carnival with him an altercation happens with that of a little teeny tiny white girl this part of the show was a bit confusing because i thought it was going to lead up to a whole lot more and i'll let you know exactly what i mean see the little girl was like you know uh, you know shelly told her get back in the back of the line can you cut ahead and she's like no people like you belong in the back of the line meaning because of like her race well after that you know she told that little girl off arthur does not like that he's like look man you can't talk to like a, a white person like that and everything because you're black and everything and she's like so and like my daddy would have talked to him like that he's all like you know not everybody has your dad's last name and you just can't do that well on the way back we see what happens a group of guys jump them and attack them now this is the part that's messed up Arthur gets his butt kicked by one person, can't even fight him off, but he's able to get a couple of licks in. But for the most part, he gets his butt kicked. Shelly beats up two of the guys. I'm just kind of like, come on now. Uh, that's nice you want to show her being all headstrong and, and powerful and all that. But, you know, can't you let him beat up at least one person? She had to beat up two. <laughs> and so this really... Like, you know, scares him because he knows why they attacked him and stuff. And even though and this is further showing that even though they're free, people still don't like them because of their color of their skin. And so he wants to tell her mom and her aunt and all that, but she don't want to. She's like, look, it'll just pass. And the next couple of episodes and, you know, we start seeing people stalk their house, uh, white people and stuff. And then, like, one time, the little girl shows back up. Well, before the little girl shows back up, Arthur decides, you know, I can't take this crap, man. I don't have your last name. Uh, people ain't going to respect me because they respect your father. And he leaves and everything. But he wants her to go with him. But she refuses. And he said he'll write her, like, you know, every month or something like that. So basically, he cowered away, and you know, I, I mean, I'm glad they did show that you know, just because you're free, don't mean you're respected, and how bad it was to where some people just wanted to flee, and so like the little girl shows back up at their home one day, um, asking the mother, "Is your husband here?" She's like, "No." She's like, "Was well, Sally here?" And she's like, "Yeah." Let me go get it for you. Nope. I have to be getting going now. <laughs> I'm just like, uh-oh. <laughs> I'm just like, that's a cold red right there, boy. <laughs> she wanted to make sure that the man of the house who <laughs> can gunsling is gone. Now, the wife, she will shoot like a coyote and everything. She ain't afraid. But, um, yeah, it's easy. They, they felt like it's easier to scare women than it is a grown man. So when the aunt is there and they all eating dinner and stuff, they see something burning in the field. It's a scarecrow. Basically, the people that Sally beat up, um, you know, like they put like a scarecrow there burning it to try to scare them away. Ugh, disgusting tactics they used to do back then. And so, of course, eventually sally has to like come um confess to her mom and her mom tells her the same thing that guy did you can't talk to them that way because that's just how things were back then because you can end up dead and everything but sally's so headstrong believing that you know nothing's gonna phase her because that's what her dad would do and stuff jenny reese is the wife of that of bass and she was also a slave in that same household he was in he got her knocked up before he ran away to native american territory she loves him dearly and she's constantly making babies in fact um bass has a total of 11 kids but we don't see 11 kids in the show we only see about five and their um and bass's older son which i'm assuming with her 
um, Bass had to arrest him in real life because his older son murdered his wife. And so after he arrested him and he did some jail time, they say he became a model citizen after that. However, other kids of Bass and Jenny also found like trouble with the law and everything. I'm not uh, sure to what extent because I can't find no documents on it, but it's, that's the only thing I can find. And Jenny is like a really cool character. Um, she's very determined, headstrong. She loves playing the piano. And so that's basically what you really see her doing. You just see her taking care of her family, playing the piano, and then talking to this one pastor with her aunt. When Bass came home, Bass does not like this man. Jenny is played by Lauren E. Banks. The pastor wants Bass's help to further liberate their people. Basically, he, the pastor wants to move into Native American territory, um, take over like the land there, and you know where black people can live in the city all on their own. Bass does not like that idea because he's all about equality. He said he wants to live with everybody, black, white, Native American, it doesn't matter. And then he finds out that the pastor is actually married, but messing around with that of like, you know, his sister-in-law and stuff. So eventually those two do break up. And so Jenny was kind of all on board with all that, you know, like, you know, a place where we can just be and be ourselves and stuff like that. And have to worry about like, you know, hatred and stuff like that because she learned, um, early on that just because you're free don't mean you're treated equally and stuff because... This is the part that's very bizarre and weird. Remember Rachel Reeves, the um, slave owner's wife and everything? Remember how I said she treated Bass kindly in the first episode and stuff? Well, she makes an appearance in the final episode where she spooks the crap out of that of Jenny because she's there on the porch with Sally and Sally is sick. And right then and there, you feel the tension like something is wrong. And so we start to see flashbacks of when Sally was born and how like, you know, Rachel started holding that of like, you know, Sally as a baby. And then the aunt picked up a ladle and was going to hit uh, Rachel with it and stuff. I'm just like, that's weird because she's been nice all of us uh, in the past and stuff. Well, turns out Rachel is just as nasty as her husband. With her husband working for like the government and everything in Texas, they're trying to pass a law so black people can be slaves again. And Rachel believes this law is going to pass and she literally tells Jenny, you and your family need to come back to my home where y'all can be safe working for me, of course, as a slave. Well, of course, Jenny doesn't ha I want this, y'all. Like, look, man, it's too dangerous out here. And then she calls Jenny kids the N-word, and Jenny slaps the taste out of her mouth. After that, Rachel leaves crying and everything, and we never see her again. And I'm just kind of like, this was the weirdest thing that kind of happened in the show, because the fact is that Rachel was portrayed nice in the beginning, and now she's betrayed kind of like this evil, nasty, like slave owner type thing. I guess because they wanted to sh give like Jenny her moment um, other than just shooting a coyote. That was still most random thing that happened in the first couple episodes when she shot that coyote. But it shows that she ain't scared. But like, you know, it wasn't she had a nice moment. I just wish it could have been with a different character because like, you know, it doesn't make sense for Rachel because of how Rachel was betrayed before. But I guess they want somebody with a close connection to that of Jenny. The last character is that of Pierce. I believe he's played by Barry Pepper. And so this man is just pure evil. He was part of the Confederacy fighting alongside Bass in the Civil War. And when he was later captured and stuff, and what and was able to escape, he shot that Native American boy point blank. And so Bass just like let that go. And at some point in time, halfway into the series, there's a bounty on Bass's head. Somebody wants him murdered. We see a bunch of like, you know, um, group of people trying to like capture Bass, but to no prevail. And in one episode, Bass like captures this one man, a black man. And so with this one black man, he keeps singing a song about like Mr. Sundown, um, Sundown or something like that. 
Uh, and so, like, Mr. Sundial, like, you know, eats the flesh of, like, slaves or something like that. And so, Bass makes him, like, you know, shut up. Well, the man's a murderer and ends up murdering a man while everybody else is asleep. So, you know, they end up um, capturing this man and he's about to be hung. At some point in time, Bass has to capture this other black man. And so with this other black man, I, th I think he was like a former, I don't know, he murdered somebody. But anyway, he was supposed to take him to like another person so he can collect the bounty on that man. And that man was that uh, Pierce. And him and Bass have like a discussion and they can't get along because they have a different philosophy of doing things. And, you know, like there's something that he said that he said that, you know, him and Bass are like basically the same person. They're both murderers and stuff. But the only difference between them it, are their badges because their badges are made from different coins and their thing. And so when Bass um, hands over the prisoner, he's all like, is that man, you know, you're going to turn him in? He's like, sure. Well, one day Bass went to go collect his money and he was $50 short because the lady told him, you know, you only brought the boots back, but not the man. Now, here's the thing I cannot find no historical reference on. In the show, whenever a person is wanted, um, if you bring them in alive, you get like the full bounty on them. If you just bring back their boots, you only get half. I don't understand that and I can't find nothing. No matter how much research I've done, I can't find nothing. And so basically it's kind of like, okay, well, if you just need somebody boots, just take the boots off somebody else and you don't have to like bring that person in. So it's a flawed system. But apparently from what I read on Reddit back in those days, when you had boots made, they were kind of like custom made. So they had their own distinct look to them. I guess they kept records of that crap. I don't know, but it's just weird. But I can't find no historic reference on it anyway. So he realizes that Pierce did not turn that man in and must have killed him. So he went back to the man he arrested earlier, who's uh, who killed that man in sleep and who's about to be hung. And he asked him, you know, tell me who Mr. Sundial is. And then right before the man is hung, he said something and it reminded him of what Pierce said. So he knows Pierce is the person killing these outlaws and like you know stuff like that but the black ones so when his wife wakes up in the morning he tells her look i'm going to find a man who killed that native american boy and blah 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 stuff like that she doesn't even say nothing so it's him and it's cheryl and it's billy crow and they're looking for this man so they ride out looking for him and stuff but then uh, you know like i said before they had that disagreement blah blah blah, blah stuff like that so Bass goes in alone and I realized, okay, wait, if he's going in alone, that means the other two are like around the perimeter trying to make sure that they're not going to get jumped and stuff like that. Bass has to go in with no weapons. When he talks to this man, the man gives him the rest of the money he's owed and more. It turns out this man lives in a the mansion. There's a giant dinosaur skull in the middle of his living room uh, and tons of other um, hunting trophies and stuff. I can't remember if he said he took this home from somebody else or he just collected it over time. And Bass tells him, like, you know, you sure got a lot of stuff on the pay that you're getting paid for because us marshals don't get paid much. And so it turns out that Pierce has um, a job on the side. Basically, Pierce does this. He captures these outlaws, bring in the boots for like $50, but he keeps these prisoners and he turns them into slave labor, mostly the black ones and everything. I saw one white man there, but it's mostly the black ones because of course he was in the Confederacy and they wanted to keep their slaves. And so like, you know, He's making so much profit off of like the beef cattle that they um that they um they harvest and everything and slaughter and then of course slave laborers. And so like you know the black man he sees that one black man there. Now the one man that was hung said that Mr. Sundial will eat the flesh of like the slaves and at some point Bass is fed a steak and he said it tasted disgusting. 
was this steak from just like a cow or was it from a human we don't know but like one black man that like he was supposed to turn in that um pierce has was being like you know hung by a tree by both arms and I remember that man told Bass that, you know, because see, Bass and that man had a mutual respect because he said, you know, he knows a slave owner that literally will burn his slaves and everything. And most likely that was Pierce. And so anyways, um, he's not going to let Bass go. And, you know, he tries to kill him and everything. Well, of course, you know, Billy and Cheryl comes in, they help save the day, and then Shirley ends up dying, and then Billy goes back to help Bass. Bass takes out most of the men, and then he eventually kills, like, Pierce and everything. When he went to the safe, he took out all the money and a giant diamond. And so he freed all the, like, prisoners and slaves, and this is the part where I believe it never, ever, 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 ever happened in real life, because... He freed all those prisoners and let them go about their way because he felt bad about like always like capturing black people and stuff. He gives them also all the money he took from the safe so they can rebuild their lives. But these men are outlaws. They have literally killed people. Why exactly they killed people? Heck of we know. You know what I'm saying? It's never really explained. And then he gives Billy the, the diamond so he can propose to that one girl. And then it just kind of ends with a montage of everything that's kind of like happening and stuff. All in all, like I said, the show is not perfect. There are just some things that are questionable and there are other things that just happen at a very fast pace. However, this is a really good drama. There is a lot of heart, a lot of emotion. There's some action here and there, some gunslinging, some fist fights, and like, you know, um, but there's never no horse chases, sadly. And it should have had more episodes because you just can't tell this man life in eight episodes. But the eight episodes you get are very satisfying. It does tell the life of that of Bass, but we only get the one side of him, and that's just being the um, a lawman and everything, a man who has a certain like code of ethics and everything, a man who believes in equality. I really wish they could have showed more facets of him, and I really wish they didn't show him killing Willie in cold blood because that didn't make no sense, especially from what people know about history. But all in all, I'm glad that David finally got to create this show because it was eight years in the making and nobody wanted to make this show because most of the time in history, they don't even want you to know who Bass Reeves is. Happy Black History Month, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Bye.